1994 version of The Lion King. And this is Tony Bancroft. Is my father. <laughs> <laughs> You're also a comedian. Yes. <laughs> no, um, I'm Mark Hand, and I animated Simba in, uh, in the film. So. Oh, Tony animated Pumbaa. Yes. So I'll tell you a little bit about my journey uh, on the Lion King, coming to the Lion King. Um, you have to forgive me. No thing going on today. I'm trying to get over it. Um, I started out uh, loving Disney animation ever since I was a kid. Just loved to draw all the time. I still do. I draw all the time, carry on my sketch pad. Um, just a big geek for animation and films and stuff. And I started out doing comic strips originally. I loved the Schultz, Peter, uh, Charles Schultz, uh, comic strip of Peanuts. I used to copy it all the time as a kid and that sort of thing. And then when I discovered animation, I thought, you know, I can utilize the drawings that I love to do and incorporate the movies that I love to see into one thing, animation. So I really consider myself a cartoonist first and a filmmaker second. Um, but I love both of them, you know. Um, and for me, I, uh, Lion King was a unique film. Have you guys met with Don Hahn already? Mm -hmm. yes. yes. Okay, then you've probably heard a little bit of the backstory of Lion King. It wasn't always the phenomenal, huge movie that it is now, the icon of cinema that it is now. Um, when we were working on it, actually, when we first came to it, it was the B Project. It was the, the project of the studio that um, Jeffrey Kassenberg, the then head of the studio, said, guys, you know, sometimes it's okay to make a face hit. They're not all home runs. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is why we're working on the film. You know? I mean, that was kind of the, the faith that they had. And Pocahontas was really looked at as being the number one movie. That was the A Project. And all the, the lead animators, it was, historically it was a time when the Disney was trying to get more productive and they broke the, the one unit of animation into two units to create two movies at the same time. Two movies obviously double the money. So they were very excited about that. But all the main animators, the guys with a lot of history and experience, went on to Pocahontas, the number one film. Um, and so it, it really opened up opportunities for guys like me. I was a young animator at the time. Uh, having worked on Aladdin, BB the Bees, and, and uh, uh, some of those films, to get a character of my own. It was something that I always dreamed of, but now all of a sudden I had a, a tryout, you know, I could actually try out for a new team. Um, so I, I sent my reel of, of Yago scenes and Cogsworth scenes and um, things like that, put them on one little VHS tape off of Don Hahn and the directors. And I was hoping, since I just came off the lab and doing Yago, that maybe I might get Zazu. You know, it's a bird, that was a bird. I can do birds. Um, I'm the bird guy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and we'll meet Mark in a minute, who's the ladies' man. <laughs> uh, and I thought, okay, well, this is cool. Maybe I can get Zazu. And lo and behold, they called me and said uh, they wanted me to do Pumbaa. And when we were first coming out to the movie, we had seen just little bits. They didn't have an animatic or a storyboard or anything together, but just drawings on the wall and, and the stuff we'd heard about the story. Pumbaa and Timon seemed to steal the show, even at an early yeah. stage. And so I was, I was stoked. I was totally excited. This was like not only my first gig as a supervising animator, but it's... Pumbaa, the warthog, and I knew it was going to be something special. And not only that, my best friend Mike Suri did Timon, and he and I shared uh, an office on, uh, on the lot, and um, we had a great time. Our friendship is really the friendship of Pumbaa and Timon. It, it, it got up on the screen. We had as much fun making the characters as the characters do in the movie, I think. Um, so that's a little bit about me. Papa? Papa? <laughs> <laughs> well... Um, I've been uh, very, very blessed to be with the company 31 years now, and uh, it, was, it wasn't quite that long before you started, though. Um, but anyway, I uh, I started um, like Tony. I, I grew up I grew up in Ohio, and uh, being a Disney animator was a, a boyhood dream for me, and. Uh, so after you know many many years of uh, you know trying uh, you know through college, I actually applied three times to the studio, uh, only to be turned down each time. So I finally got it admitted to the uh, Cal Arts program, which is here in Southern California, which Tony uh, went to school later on as well. Um, 
but there we learned our learned our craft from uh, uh, some retired Disney veterans, and uh, you know, they, I was hired in 1980, so I've been there ever since. But to uh, Lion King, I had uh, moved to Florida when they opened the studio. Uh, they opened up the, what was then called the Disney MGM Studios. Do you remember those? It will always be MGM. It will. Okay. <laughs> for, 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 okay. So now it's what called Disney Hollywood, Hollywood Studios. Studios. They call okay. it. They just call it the studios. The studios. Okay. Well, that was 1989. I had finished uh, my work on The Little Mermaid, and uh, we, my family and I, moved down to Florida, and uh, so. That was the beginning of uh, 10 years in Florida, but during that time, uh, the Lion King project came along. And actually, I was interested in doing Scar originally, I thought, because I had just come off of doing Jasmine and Aladdin, and I had done Belle and Beauty and the Beast, and Ariel and the Birdman, and then in the future, I had a few more yet to come. Um, but I was really interested in uh, Scar. Uh, I said, I'd really love to do the villain. I thought this would be really exciting. Uh, to do the villain. But uh, Don Hahn and his uh, very quiet, uh, gentle wisdom set me down and said, you know, he says, I have no doubt that you could do a great villain and Scar would be, you know, we could do that, but he says, we have a lot of really good people that could do Scar and they were thinking of Andreas at the time of doing that, but he said, really, Simba is the key to this film. If Simba doesn't work, the show doesn't work. And he says, we really think you, you've got what it takes to, to pull Simba off. So I, I, I can't say no to that. I <coughs> tell your guy, of course he's a lot bigger than me too. So, <laughs> But uh, no, Don's a, Don's a good guy. But uh, So I said, you know, okay, I'll, I'll take that challenge on. So I, I ended up, I did all of my young Simba up through the end of uh, Hakuna Matata where he grows to uh, mature adulthood and he goes wandering off at the end of the song. And then another animator, Ruben Aquino, uh, took over and, and supervised adult uh, Simba throughout the movie. But that was, that was my role of uh, doing, uh, doing young Simba through about the first half or two thirds of the film, I guess. Um, but yeah, we had a really, uh, it was really neat because it was one of these bi-coastal films. We had the, the main hub of the production was here in California. And uh, the studio in, in Florida <coughs> operated as a satellite, uh, which we had done on Beauty and the Beast, as well as Aladdin. I did all of Jasmine, was I did down in Florida. So we were, as a studio, growing and, and proving ourselves on each and every film. And uh, Lion King was, was no different. So we were uh, had a, a tremendously talented staff of young artists in Florida as well as like Tony here, a lot of uh, you know, rookie, rookie animators uh, coming on as their first time supervising characters uh, here in California. So uh, it was a lot of fun. We had a lot of fun with it. you have any questions? Any guys? questions, yeah. Feel free, fire away. Do they have any illustrators anymore at um, <laughs> the studios? Pardon me? Do they have illustrators anymore at the studios? Yeah, in, yeah. MGM? No, MGM is, is oh. shut down. They, they, they shut that, that studio down, unfortunately. Me too, me too. Because <laughs> you used to like, stand behind them and oh. they would do a drawing for you, I think. Well, I get mine up here. There we go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hold my pencil up so you don't want to draw it. Take a picture. Take a picture. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, the uh, Florida studio was shut down after Brother Bear. Brother Bear was the last film they did. Oh, down there. there's a ghost in my pictures, or I'm getting other people's flash. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, I forgot. <laughs> yeah. When you say supervising one of the characters, I mean, did you draw all of the pieces, or, or that's a good question? That yeah, I mean, traditionally, animators. This is why Mark is the ladies' man, and I'm kind of the comedy guy. Is that? Um, were cast a lot like in a live action movie. An animator has specific skill sets that go beyond just the, the drawings he makes with his pencil, uh, but also kind of a performance bin too, because we are, in essence, an actor with a pencil too. Um, and I've always done comedy characters, and Mark has always done the, the, uh, the ladies, up until Simba anyway. But uh, actually, just did uh, the Princess and the Frog. What's his name? <laughs> Tiana. 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 And he's also Pooh and Winnie the Pooh. Oh. Uh, we know we're all well. well. <laughs> <laughs> Did you get a little 
I got I, I have a lovely time with that. Yeah, so that <laughs> Um, what was the question? <laughs> Supervising <laughs> animators. Oh, 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 okay, I'm sorry. Um, so yeah, uh, you know, to do... <laughs> the of the day. So uh, to do one character really on a film is, is a daunting job. Um, I mean, for Simba, Mark is actually one of the fastest animators. I'm going to toot his horn all day. He's one of the fastest animators on the planet Earth, if not Disney for sure. And so, um, but even he can't do all the animation of Simba in the film. It's just too much to get done in the time that we have. And we have a year and a half or so to do the animation. It's still a lot of time, but uh, animation is just a very time-consuming process, one drawing at a time. There's 12 to 24 drawings in one second. So you can imagine how many drawings we have to do. Um, so for Pumba, I supervised a team of three other animators. And for him, I think it was, you said eight or nine? I said no more than eight, yeah. And so the supervising animator is in charge of not only making sure that the performance is consistent throughout the movie of our character that we're in charge of, but also the drawings. So we go over the drawings of every animator, we look at their scenes, review them before the directors do, so that we can put our stamp of approval on it and say that you know we're happy with it as the character lead before the directors see it. That's a good question. It's kind of like quality control to some extent. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is there a certain scene that's your favorite? Well, um, I guess for me, my favorite moment, it's, it's kind of a sad moment, but my favorite moment in the film that I worked on was the Mufasa's death there. And that whole scene there in the valley after the wildebeest has gone through. I mean, that was just a real... Uh, so you killed it. I had <laughs> it. <laughs> my uh, no, actually, Andreas did. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> um, but no, I think that was just such a. We were talking earlier with some of the other groups, and and that's it was really a courageous thing to do, story wise, and just the whole idea of, you know, even today, Bambi is still criticized for like how did you kill Bambi's mother? And I was like, well, it was important to the story, and I think it was done. That was done very tastefully. I mean, it was all off screen, and you just, you know, you never saw anything, really, and you just saw the aftermath. But here, I think we we took it just a little bit further, and I think it was also done very tastefully, but it was important. You know, we had to, you had to have that moment, and I think that that, you know, that was such a, a critical moment. And so I was excited to get in and terrified at the same time, making sure, you know, afraid that if it didn't work, you know, it could have been just nothing. So I, I was... I think it came off okay. So mm -hmm. I cried. You cried. Oh, no. Okay, I did my job. But, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, that was that was a real challenge, and and I think I think a real courageous thing on the part of the directors to to have that kind of a moment in the film and to allow us to to do that. And I think that was it was very important. I think for me it was Hakuna Matata. I mean, mm -hmm. and that was Pumbaa's theme song, right? So. Um, it was a lot of fun, uh, although there was a lot of animators that worked on it, it wasn't just me, but um, we just had a great time showing what their Hakuna Matata lifestyle is, you know, they're, they're big bachelors, they hang out all the time, they're easy to lucky, they love eating gross bugs and slimy things, and that was just fun to explore as an animator. Grump, grump, grump. Slimy but satisfying. Slimy but satisfying. <laughs> And as animators, you know, we, we uh, you probably know this, I mean, this is kind of animation 101, but the voices are recorded first. Um, so uh, Ernie Zabella, in, in his case, uh, Jonathan Taylor, Jonathan Thomas, Taylor Thomas, we would be at the recording uh, sessions and we would watch them do their parts. And we try and, we do try and get some of the element of the actor into the, the personification and the caricaturing that we do of, of the character. So there is a little bit of Ernie in there, and there's a little bit of Jonathan in there. I think so. Um, but there's also a little bit of us, too. You know, I mean, look. No. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it um, but, uh, you know, I think uh, that, uh, you know, we're proud of the work that we did on, on Lion King, uh, but we had no idea that it was going to be a phen phenomenon that it's become and seen worldwide. And, Records, albums, toys, Broadway shows, all that kind of stuff, but now 3D stereoscopic. Um, and for me personally, I have kids that grew up on The Lion King. They were like three, four, uh, around the time the movie came out. 
Uh, they loved it then, and now as teenagers, we recently went and saw last weekend, as a matter of fact, the, the 3D uh, version of it uh, theatrically, and it was like they were kids again. It was, mm -hmm. it was their childhood, and it's many people's childhoods. Um, and now for a new generation, and 3D stereoscopic, we're excited that it'll come back for a new generation. What's it like seeing your characters in 3D? Um, you know, it's weird because I, one of my biggest challenges on the film from a drawing standpoint was Kumba's long nose and that big stop sign thing that he has on the end there, that big pig shape <laughs> nose, and trying to get as much dimension in that was always a, a challenge for me. Um, and now with 3D stereoscopy, I think they've really made that nose even bigger. It really feels like it comes <laughs> out. And it's <laughs> the and there's scenes where he's like right in the camera, you know. What'd you do, kid? You know, that kind of thing when he's talking to Simba. And um, it's cool. I mean, I think it adds a, a, a level of dimension that I was trying to get in my work at the, in 1994 when we didn't have that technology. So I think it adds to it. So you mentioned, um, and you just always loved drawing, and it was what you did as a kid, and then obviously you went and got mm -hmm. all the training you need. But what